Hi guys, welcome back to the Cake Lady Podcast. Uh, today I'm sitting down with Image of Deceit, and I do need to send them the link because I am actually running behind. <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, please, please, please go follow both me and Image of Deceit on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, all that glorious stuff. And, oh, that's not it. Sorry, I'm trying to like find the link. There it is. And tune in Tuesdays for Band of the Week, Wednesdays for updated Songs of the Week. And stay tuned uh, later this month for, I'm thinking, uh, cake deliveries. I have, I think, I think I have like six cake deliveries set up. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for those. I will be posting photos and more than likely the cake making process and delivery process because, you know, sometimes I can miss me. Sorry about that glare. I don't know what to do about that. That's better. Hopefully you guys can see me. I'm kind of mad because uh, this morning I went to put my dishes away and the like little rubber seal for the lid on this cup it broke and I don't know if you can replace those I mean at this point it might just be easier to get a new lid but where where am I going to get a lid for something that small I, I mean, those those size cups aren't very typical because I have another size that's like the same, like it's the same size, but um, because of like the way it's shaped, it's annoying. Um, I'm so excited for my cake deliveries this month. Um, oh my God, hello. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I already started the recording, so it's doing the intro. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. So, um, my name is D. Anthony, and I'm basically the soul creator and songwriter for image of deceit um formed it kind of naturally back in 2020 uh it wasn't meant to be a solo project it was meant as um more of just a way to get my creativity out there for myself and slowly but surely became uh what you hear today yeah have you ever thought about like adding more members? I have actually. Um, I have some stuff in the work. I've got someone who records uh, live guitar and bass. And um, well, I'm not going to announce it officially yet, but <laughs> I do have something in the works here soon. Something in the works, like song wise or album wise? <laughs> um, as far as uh, adding an additional member uh, to the solo project, I don't want to um, add too many people into the project just because it'll um, kind of like along the lines, like I don't know if you're familiar with Static X at all, but yeah. with Static X, it kind of expanded beyond what uh wayne statics and vision was just because so many people were involved in the creative aspect of it and i don't want it to really stray too far from uh what i'm envisioning do you find do you find that you work better like as a solo project without like other people coming in or do you like like creative input from other people um 
kind of a bit of both, but I would say probably better as a solo project. Um, I do have certain people that, you know, as I'm updating the songs and adding stuff in and uh, stuff like that, I do kind of send them out there and um, whether they have feedback or not, always appreciated and it's more from a hey you know i like this or um they would offer suggestions or advice it's not so much of uh, an intrusive critique so it, it's more helpful so yeah i would say a solo artist yeah because i i mean i mean it does i hear bands you know a lot of the time where like they won't release a song because you know they can't get past a certain point because they're arguing about it um about what's best for it and you know sometimes like it's nice to hear other people's opinions on that um <laughs> could you tell me where did the name image of deceit come from like was that like your number one name sure. or was that um like in a list of names Um, it was basically an alternative that I came up with later. I don't exactly remember the original name I was going for. It was probably more along the lines of like, uh, Mirror's Deception or something along the lines of that. But the names I was looking for when I was looking them up were taken already. Uh, this name was not taken. The only place I found it was the name of a book, which, you know, as long as it's not in the music industry then i'm good, I'm good. <laughs> but yeah um as far as the name itself basically i wanted to find something to where um it was more personal for me like i'm usually a, a shy introvert and so when i'm in a group of people that i've never met before even if it's like i know one person but i don't know like the other two or three I'm usually quiet and I just observe and just kind of get um, uh, get a read on people's personalities. So I know pretty much how I need to be. And a lot of times, like when you're shy like that, if you misspeak or, you know, you say something with nervousness or whatever the case may be, they remember that. Yeah. And now they have this, uh, false perception of you that's not really you because they don't know you yet yeah so that in a nutshell is really what the name of image of deceit is i like that because um my favorite band they have like a name that's like kind of the opposite of that where like you're around other people you like put on basically like a facade so like these mm -hmm. people don't like pin you down for what you are um that's actually kind of cool like that I like that. <laughs> um, so, like, were there, like, was there a name that you were, like, dead set on and then you found out it was, like, someone else's name and you were like, oh, man. Yeah, I I want to, I could be wrong because it's been so long, but I really want to say it was uh, Mirror's Deception. I, I think that's originally what I had gone with. Is it there's another band named that? Uh, if that's the one that um, I originally came up with, yes. Oh, I like I I find it cool how many people come up with the same names and then you know they find out that other people have the name, and it's like, you know, yeah, I mean, well, it's kind of like ah, um, but then at the same time, some it's people just like, have the same. Name. Yeah, I know. Um, I was looking for a band the other day because I was like trying to figure out like what the whole backstory was and I could not find them because it was someone else's name and I was like come on like it's not that hard I don't think like put a period at yeah. the end or something <laughs> exactly or just a number or whatever yeah but so you said you started in 2020 right yes did you start like because of the pandemic and like you know looking for something to do or was it something you thought about for a while and the pandemic just kind of gave you like 
you know, the go ahead for it? Actually, it was more of a uh, coincidence that it was happening around that time. Um, there was nothing that I thought about, but um, somebody like at that time I was in the band Navarium and I was their drummer. And with technology these days, uh, you can basically do everything on the computer. And one of the guys that was in the band at the time, who was our vocalist, uh, I always wanted to learn how to scream. Um, I feel when that. <laughs> my, oh, yeah. When my brother and I first actually started uh, forming Navarium, originally I was the screamer. I wasn't doing it right, but that was the <laughs> intention. Well, anyways, uh, to fast forward back again, um, our vocalist was basically telling me, okay, well, this is what you need to do in order to scream. And he said one thing that really stuck with me. And it's basically, you know, people focus so much on the projection as opposed to just the technique itself. And oh, yeah. do, then you're going to blow your voice out. You're going to do it wrong and you're going to get discouraged. So when you hear the screaming vocals, and I'm not saying this is for everybody, but when you hear some of these screaming vocals and even some of these lower growls, they're actually, they sound more intense in the recording than what you would actually hear in volume if you're in the same room with them. And that was, that was the secret that I got and that's how I was able to do them. Um, but so I was able to do that. And then he also had showed me a virtual program. It's a VST plugin where you can create your own guitar patterns. And so I was already creating um, a whole song of drum patterns. And once he told me about that, I was like, okay, well, instead of waiting on the rest of the band to come over top of what I created, let me just do it myself. So then I started doing it myself. And then I was learning how to scream at the same time. And, um, of course I was still an amateur and all my stuff at that time. It sucked. Yeah. I'm not going to, you suck at first until you don't, but, oh yeah. uh, so they, they were doing their own thing and it was sitting to the side and, you know, it, for me, it kind of sucked because I wanted to get, you know, my creativity out there and I wasn't really getting it out enough in Navarium, uh, no disrespect to those guys. It just wasn't happening. Yeah. And so I started to take these songs to the side. And then once I started to develop uh, my own style to where I can go forward with it, I'm like, well, let me just start my own solo project. So I started my own solo project, finally found a sound that uh, I was happy with. And then eventually I was like, you know, guys, um, what I'm doing over here is really starting to form. It's really starting to take off a little bit. Yeah. Um, so more or less, I just kind of said, okay, well, after the music video that Navarium did, I said, well, this is the last thing I'm doing with Navarium. I want to concentrate on my solo project and get that out there. Yeah. And well, like, no hate to other bands, but, like, I feel like, I mean, I feel like it's kind of common that a lot of bands during the creative process leave the drummer out because... I mean, when I was doing marching band, you know, people just assumed they like we don't know anything about how to write music or play music just because we're, you know, banging on something. And it's like, that's not how that works. There is a technique to everything you do and you still have to learn music theory behind it because, you know, you can't just like yeah. throw in something that doesn't really fit. So, like, I see, I mean, I do see a lot of bands that, like, the drummer is just, like, off to the side. They're not doing anything. And then, you know, they're, like, you can do the drum patterns, but that's about it. And then, you know, drummers do get discouraged. I've seen a lot of drummers just, like, lead bands because they're, like, if you're not going to listen to me, then why am I here? Mm -hmm. Well, that and uh, with the technology, I mean, you can make up your own drum patterns. And Yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen it before. My my brother, he always wanted to be a drummer and yeah. he may not be able to like when he sits down on the kit, obviously, you know, he's not a drummer, but in his mind, he can play the drums. It's really weird. Yeah. Um, so when he goes on and he creates his songs, 
with the drum VST programs, he can plug in the drums himself. So at one point, it was kind of overshadowing um, what I wanted to do. And I get it, you know, you got to do what's best for the song. And sometimes that means going with uh, whatever the guitarist creates because it's his song. Yeah. And I get that. Um, I was one not to really fight for uh, what I wanted to incorporate in my personality. You know, some of it actually did get into the final cut, but, you know, it was disappointing going along the way. And a lot of what I was creating kind of just got, you know, sent off into the void. But, um, you know, I, I, I do enjoy- feel like, I mean, I've talked to a lot of bands and like the longstanding bands, you know, they they're like they have pretty good chemistry. But like when you're just starting out as a band and you're in that like, you know, I would say probably like the first five years of a band, um, a lot of people are like, you know, this is my band. But like when you're in a band setting, it needs to be like everyone contributes or no one contributes because, you know, it's a group effort. And like, I mean, when I start when I first started playing drums, I did like the marching drums first. So mm-hmm. like the first time I sat down at a drum kit, I was like, I could totally play this. And, you know, I was wrong because <laughs> like, you know, you can get used to playing like a snare drum or a bass drum or like, you know, they're completely separate. But when you put it all together, there's like a big technique to it that you just have to like retrain your brain to do. Yeah, w- which is very true. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I still had a lot to learn as a drummer at that time. And my brother, he's eight years older than me. And he was uh, he's been involved in music longer than I have. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not trying to paint him in a negative light or anything. Um, he does know more about all that stuff than I do. But I guess it was just my mentality of I'm the drummer. Why are you kind of just, you know, stealing putting- my thunder? <laughs> Uh, more more or less but yeah like why are you pushing my creativity yeah I do feel like technology is definitely pushing like the band mentality out the window Mm -hmm. because like I've heard a lot of amazing songs from independent artists that just like you know are like I'm not doing that band thing anymore but like it's specifically only after they've been in a band and they're like, I've been around that type of stuff and I just don't want to do it anymore because there's, I would say like, just like band politics that just, you know, half the time when you talk about it, it's the outside world. It makes no sense because mm-hmm. they're like, oh, aren't you guys like, you know, the bestest of friends? <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes you have to uh, sacrifice an argument just for the relationship and the bonds. Yeah. But ultimately, the music is supposed to win. Yes. Uh, what would you say would be, like, your biggest influence in the way you write music? Is it, like, other musicians or is it, like, um, personal life experiences? I would have to say as far as the way that uh, I write the songs, uh, not vocally, by the way, but the way that I write the songs hands down static x because um wayne static and he's even said it in interviews before that their guitar playing is so simplistic because their focal point is not on the guitars it's on the vocal on the electronic elements all of that stuff and that to the t is what my music is all about it's about the electronic elements the synth all that stuff so when you do hear the guitars, they are very simplistic. And I have a very simplistic formula that I follow. So if you're this diehard guitarist, you're probably going to get bored playing my songs or you're just going to have a good time, you know? Um, But as far as vocally, it started out with uh, Static X, but it ended up just being you know, whatever came to my mind. Like, I've been getting into a lot of uh, melody here lately, which I didn't originally. And with the melody, like, I'm not a singer by any stretch of the imagination, but I kind of formed uh, my vocal cadences and my screaming into 
um, I guess what could be sung, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, so instead of just straight screaming and, you know, all this aggressiveness, you know, it, it you'll find like little hooks here and there, melodies and all that stuff. Um, but lyrically, a lot of it comes from personal experiences. Yeah. I have... I didn't know this at first, but I have been struggling with anxiety for a long time and it finally hit its peak at one point and I had an epiphany and I went to the doctor about it and he said, uh, well, we'll go ahead and put you on this medication. I got put on the medication, um, came back to the doctor, told him how I felt after that. And he said, well, it sounds like we caught it a little bit late if there's that, that drastic of a change. Yeah. So without realizing it subconsciously, the first few tracks were actually about uh, my struggles with anxiety. And uh, you'll hear that a lot throughout my tracks, actually, from different aspects, different perspectives, different angles. So, yeah, yeah, a lot of that stuff from experience. I think the more personal the experience is when it comes to writing the songs, like, to me, it's just like the better the song because it's more... I don't want to say like relatable because not everyone has mental health. Um, but like, it's more like, I don't know. Um, I just, I feel like I like a band more when I can tell that it's like, you know, this isn't just like, you know, Real. I threw it into some AI generated stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It's just like, you know, the musicians that care about the music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the, the other thing, too, is, like, um, I enjoy, like, I'll have an idea of what I want to write about, and I prefer to make it into a metaphor. So even if I'm writing about this, you know, if you read the lyrics, you can think, oh, well, he's talking about this. Yeah. And I try to create some sort of story on top of that. So it depends on how you interpret it. The best songs are always up for interpretation. Because <laughs> then you don't have to, like, I don't know. It's definitely better for a wide range of audience when it's up to interpretation. Because, like, you know, some people hear a song, like, if it's about death, that, like, oh, I wrote this about, you know, my dad dying. Um, but, like, other people are like, oh, this, you know, could be for a toxic relationship or something like that. Always yeah. about interpretation. I, well, I, yeah, I, I think it's better that way. Like me personally, I've never been one to listen to music and focus on the lyrics per se. Yeah. Uh, but I will say that uh, for, as my preference is if you uh, write out the lyrics and basically you're straightforward with the lyrics, to me, I kind of find that a little boring. I want to find the message in the lyrics itself as opposed to you telling me what the message is right because like i mean you could tell me what the uh, message is and then you know like i don't know it's like reading a book like when you find out what it's about like all the magic's gone behind it so like it just like it kind of just like ruins it for you because you're like oh i've been interpreting like it this way it's like you know, one of your favorite books you read in like in English class and like <laughs> you go through everything and then you're like, this is definitely not my favorite book anymore because <laughs> it just like ruins, it ruins the facade uh, behind it. Gives a secret away. Yeah. Um, I have two more questions. Okay. These are questions I ask everyone because I like to hear the answers. Um, if you could open or headline a show, what living band would you want to be a part of that lineup? Um, Static X for sure. Static X is a def <laughs> definitely. Um, I know it would be kind of for me a little cliche or whatnot to be all industrial metal, but. Yeah. I would a lot of it to be industrial metal. So obviously Static X, um, Power Man 5000, Rob Zombie. Oh, Rob uh, Zombie would be cool. Absolutely. 
Um, Daedric, who Daedric is, I mean, she's already signed, and I love Daedric. She's just about to release her first album. Yeah. And her stuff is uh, very industrial metal. Um, and she's on the Fix It label with uh, Cell Dweller and Scandroid and all of them. Yeah. Uh, Play Daedric, Cell Dweller, Blue, so Blue Stolly, and Fear Factor. That would be my lineup. That'd be a cool lineup. Be like an all day thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd be happy. I'd just sit there and listen to everybody. I wouldn't even plug. <laughs> You'd have to be the opener so you could watch everyone else. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll work too. <laughs> uh, and my last question is you know, I'm the cake lady. I deliver cakes to bands, free cakes. <laughs> Um, if I did a cake delivery for you at some point, what flavor of cake would you like? Oh, I feel like everybody would pick this, but I would pick chocolate. Surprisingly, not a lot of people pick chocolate. I think I've had two chocolate cakes. Wow. Right. Uh, most people are like, um, like vanilla or if they can't decide a flavor, I give them funfetti because I like the sprinkles. <laughs> so then they're like oh this works perfectly and then i had i did have a cheesecake once so that was interesting i feel like it says a lot about people when you know they give me their cake orders and i'm like that's such an interesting thing i never would have paid you for that <laughs> uh, yeah I, I get that because i mean it's kind of along the lines of uh when you try to figure out okay well what type of music does this person listen to? Right. Like everybody thinks, well, I shouldn't say everybody, but most people, when they first meet me, they think, oh, well, you listen to country. <laughs> uh, no, fuck, I, I don't. I'm, I'm sorry. No disrespect to anybody right? who, it, at all. I mean, you, you do your thing. I just, that's not my thing. People assume that I'm like a rap person, like, you know, the sad rap, emo rap. Um, Strictly because, like, you know, I'm very open about my mental health issues. So they're like, you know, you probably listen to, like, um, who was it? Oh, man, I forget the name. But, like, you know, then I drive by, like, that same person later, and they can hear, like, my music outside my car. <laughs> and it's like, I didn't know you were so angry. And I'm like, I'm not an angry person. It's just, you know, I like this type of music. So. Hey, well, I'm not angry anymore. True. <laughs> okay well thank you for joining me today absolutely thank you for having me and you're kind of in the same time zone so have a good day you too day um yeah i think that's everything who i am tired <laughs> yeah i totally get that yeah um all right well have a nice day thank you again so much and right. I will be putting sit for silence at the end of this. Yeah. Perfect. Bye. Right. Bye. Oops, still recording. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys again for tuning into the Cake Lady podcast. That was Image of Deceit and... Tune in Tuesdays for Band of the Week. Wednesdays for Songs of the Week. My playlist. And um, I'm going to repeat this again. Please go follow me on Facebook, Spotify, YouTube, TikTok. It would mean the world to me to grow this podcast to where I don't have to work two jobs anymore. <laughs> It'd be great. Um, and please go follow Image of Deceit on Spotify, YouTube, Facebook. I don't know if they have TikTok. I'll try to find it if they do. Um, thank you guys again so much. And this is Sit for Silence. <laughs>